Good day. I'm Dr. Dan Jones, past president of the American Heart Association and professor of medicine and physiology at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Today with me is co-chair of our new AHA ACC guidelines on blood pressure management, Dr. Bob Carey. Dr. Carey is Dean Emeritus and Professor of Medicine at the University of Virginia. Dr. Carey, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Let's, let's talk for a while about comorbidities and what the guidelines say about those who have comorbidities along with hypertension. So there are lots of comorbidities um, and I won't recite them all, but there are two that I'd like to emphasize because of their frequency. The first is diabetes and the second is chronic kidney disease. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about diabetes first. There's been some confusion in the literature and some change in the guidelines over the years about how to manage a patient with diabetes and hypertension. I'm particularly interested in what the guidelines have to say about these special patients. So we're recommending uh, the blood pressure threshold of 130 over 80 for initiation of uh, treatment of hypertension, and we're recommending a goal target of one third, less than 130 over 80 for diabetics. Um, and we uh, examined the literature extensively uh, on the subject because there are so many people with diabetes, um, particularly with our epidemic of obesity in this country. And uh, we determined that the randomized clinical trials, including the ACCORD trial, uh, but also together with SPRINT, were very consistent with each other in showing a benefit of lowering blood pressure below 130 over 80. If I recall correctly, for non-diabetic patients, patients without comorbidities, the recommendations from the guideline uh, uh, for treatment from 130 to 140 systolic would be to begin with, with uh, non-drug therapy, with lifestyle therapy. Uh, how about for the diabetic patient between 130 and 140? What is the recommendation for beginning treatment with those patients? So. We, our guideline emphasizes the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk of patients um, and only the high risk patients in that blood pressure category should be treated with drugs. But we assign uh, diabetics into the high risk group automatically. So uh, those patients who are diabetic and who fall into the blood pressure range uh, above 130 uh, over 80, uh, below 140 over 90, uh, should be treated with drugs. And how about chronic kidney disease? Chronic kidney disease is the same. Uh, we, we felt that uh, the SPRINT trial in particular, which included a lot of um, patients with chronic kidney disease, showed that the, there was a great benefit in treating those patients and we could safely recommend a threshold of 130 over 80 and a target below 130 over 80. Well, would, would you mention for the listener uh, guidance on where to begin with drug therapy for these two comorbidities? So um, my uh, guidance there would be that both diabetics and patients with chronic kidney disease automatically fall into the high risk group and should, drug therapy should be initiated if the blood pressure is greater than 130 over 80. Is there any particular class that's uh, preferred in diabetic patients or chronic kidney disease patients? Uh, all of the, um, the first line agents uh, are acceptable. So diuretics and so renin diu inhibitors and calcium antagonists, is that correct? Diuretics, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors and ARBs are our, our first line uh, of treatment. Those are all acceptable. However, if the diabetic patient or the patient with chronic kidney disease has albuminuria, uh, and we have um, specific numbers for that, over 300 milligrams per day, 
then uh, an ACE inhibitor should be initiated preferentially to um, help protect the kidneys. And if an ACE inhibitor is not tolerated, an ARB can be substituted. And our listeners can go to the guidelines to read about all those other comorbidities. There's information there. Yes. All right. Dr. Carey, thank you very much. Thank you.